real quick, if you want a copy of any of our teachings, uh, they're free, DVD, they're on the, on the, on the little stand in the, in the aisle there in the hallway. And uh, we're trying to equip our website with, um, with things that can really help people, things that have helped us that are really bearing fruit in people's lives. And we've got our cards there with our website address. And if you're interested, check them out. You know, maybe the Lord will just take you into some new things. He's been blessing us, and we've been seeing um, the anointing grow in our in our ministry and the body coming to life. There's so many people in here um, that are just coming to, to life in Jesus. And uh, Charles in the back is, uh, you know, the, the miracle anointing is, is working through him. Who was who was praying last night? Gina last night was praying. Um, for a lady in what was in Stockton last night, and and this this lady got healed there, and you were helping pray too. I tell you, the anointing is transferable, and it's growing, and uh, and I tell you, this something's going to happen here, I and mean, we're I'm not sure, but the, the the Lord is raising up a body to do exploits, and we are so encouraged. You know, we may just be a little group, but you know, like Kim was saying, God does. He usually does things if you look through small things, you know, humble beginnings, and you can, you know, if you give them a place. And uh, so we yield this word to you. We thank you for the anointing. Thank you for grace. I pray for grace to be released to build your body up, Lord. We thank you for the ministry sitting here in this, in this room. And we just want to see you magnified and, and glorified and, and lifted up. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And how how is Jesus glorified in us? When we become dependent upon him. Yes. And uh, and God is really trying to, to to awaken us to the reality that we can't do a thing apart from him, but we, we can do all things through him, right? Yes. Praise the Lord. And so he put a word on my heart today to share called, Who Will Believe? Or who has believed our report? Anybody, anybody believed his report? We all have. This is out of Isaiah 53. I'll just read it here. Isaiah 53, verse 1. You have your Bibles. and it says there, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? <clears throat> Hallelujah. There's real revelation there. I tell you, I'm, God is... God has set things up. It's so simple. You know, it, the ones who have believed the report are the ones who have seen the mighty arm of Jehovah revealed. It's so simple that we, we can trip right over it. Earlier this week, the Lord, he's working on me. I'm telling you. Is he working on anybody in here? <laughs> and sometimes he'll tell you things that to bring you down. You know, you might think you're, in, you're here when you're really not you know and, and and i'm finding that the way up is down yeah. <laughs> and he says hey i want you to have mustard seed faith and you know if you if, if you're not in the right place that can kind of take the wind out of your sails as a preacher and uh <laughs> but not that we don't have faith we all have faith and we we tap into that that realm of faith and so i've been thinking a lot about this this week as a minister and i believe that uh, I have faith, but do I have the revelation that I have mustard seed faith all the time? You know, anywhere I go, we, do we have that revelation that we have it? Do we know that we have it by the word, by the Holy Spirit, and, do we, and, and have we stepped into it? I'm telling you, there's great potential in mustard seed faith. Hallelujah. And uh, why don't we have it? Sometimes, I'm not saying that you don't have it, don't get mad at me, you know, but um, sometimes we, we, we just don't have it because of various reasons, right? And I remember in the scriptures that uh, the disciples asked the Lord why they couldn't cast this devil out of somebody. And you remember the account that's over in Matthew 17, 20, and Jesus told them it was because of their unbelief. And then he goes on to say, Verily, or most assuredly, I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain, just notice a grain of mustard seed. How big is that? Oh, man. 
You shall say unto this mountain, remove hence yonder place. What's he really talking about here is something you can't see is more powerful. You know, words are more powerful than the mountains. And they have the potential of moving mountains. I heard a testimony. This is a real testimony. This brother told it to me this morning um, and from down, in, down south of Southern California. This preacher was uh, uh, sitting there with his church that needed, he needed to buy another property because it wasn't big enough to accommodate him. And uh, his property was also, uh, there was a mountain on his, on, his, on his land. And the Lord told him, he said, well, just speak to the mountain and tell it to move. That's all he had to do. So he did. And then a while longer, you know, I guess he, he spoke to it again. He says, in the name of Jesus, I command that mountain to move. If the mountain would move, he could, he could add on to the church. Next thing he knows, a, a contractor, this is a true story. A contractor showed up with, uh, with some time on his hands, and he was an earth moving contractor. And he wanted some tax credit. And he said, I'm ready to go. And he said, okay. And they moved that mountain. I'm telling you, you can move mountains with your words. Anybody want to see something move? I mean, there's tremendous potential in what God has given us. And he's trying to awaken our awareness to, to the value of what we have. I'm telling you, it's awesome. And then Jesus goes on, uh, you know, in the next verse here, he reveals how he cast that devil out through prayer. We've been talking about that. And fasting. I'm telling you, anybody ever fast in here? If you're fasting and you're, and you're led by the Spirit, it will empower you. There's strength that can come no other way. You, you need to have a, a fasted lifestyle. And I could use a little bit more of that. But, uh, but I'm telling you, there is meat that we know not of, that the world doesn't know about of, that comes through prayer and fasting. And it, and it, it gives us that ability to speak to these mountains yeah. and these, these forces that are coming against us. So I tell you, just, just think of the potential that God has given us through the, a faith that's so small, the size of a mustard seed. You know, if we could get a revelation of this, Amen. you know, the potential of what God can do through you. You know, Kim was talking about all these cool things that are happening to him. I'm telling you, I bet there's other testimonies in here of what God is doing. And uh, I, there's no limit, is there? No. Oh, man. Jesus said in Luke 17, 6, he said, He said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say to a tree, the sycamore tree, be plucked up by the root, planted. You got any things that are growing in your life that turned into trees? that are trying to choke you out. I'm telling you, start speaking to these things. You got any addictions or, yeah, there's things, you know, that we can, that turn into trees, right? And, and trying to um, choke out that word. Well, we can speak to them. In Mark chapter four, verse 30, he said, he said something very powerful that the Lord is trying to get me to, to to step into the reality of it. And this is Mark chapter 4, verse 30. And believe me, this is powerful. If we'll apply it to our life. He says, this is the words of Jesus. He says, whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? What's the kingdom of God like? And, and what comparison shall we compare it with? And this is, this is something that I'm learning to pay heed to here. You know, because if I've learned that by trying to compare the kingdom with anything else other than what the Word of God says we're to compare it with, other than what Jesus has said, can cause you to miss the revelation of the kingdom. And uh, this is why so many people miss it so often, I think. That's why I've missed it in the past. And, and, and realize the kingdom is so above and beyond anything else you know, that when it actually does come into manifestation, it's often not realized because it's usually under, misunderstood. It's misunderstood. Why? Because I think the way that the world compares things, you know, versus how Jesus tells us to compare things is by a totally different standard. 
And what does that mean? The world usually looks at the size of, of the thing that they're looking at in comparison to the Word of God. And, and, and a lot of people assume that because the kingdom is so small, just a word, you know, that, that uh, is so small in comparison to what is so in their face, they, they don't believe in the potential of that seed to, to grow and to overcome and move whatever it is. Does that make sense? Does this happen to anybody? I mean, it's happened to me. Verse 31, uh, Jesus said concerning the kingdom, he said, it's like a grain of mustard seed, which when it's sown, notice this is a real seed. You can't see it with the natural eye. Well, we've got the Bible, we can see it there, right? And, and, and thank God that we have the written word. But when it's sown in the earth, it's less than all the seeds in the earth. This is what Jesus says, it's the least of all. But when it is sown and it begins to grow, it becomes greater than all, right? Greater than all. And it shoots out in big branches. And How many wanna see some big branches shoot out of you? Hallelujah, with some fruit. And uh, and uh, why is it that so many don't see the kingdom of God, which is at hand? You know, I think it's because we just don't haven't yet come to the full revelation that there is an enemy hard at work trying to magnify, exalt everything and everyone in the world to the point that when to the point when a word of the kingdom is spoken that they can't hear it or see it. And uh, I'll tell you, Matthew 13, 19, Jesus said in Matthew 13, 19, he said, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and doesn't understand it, then comes the wicked one. It says in Mark 4, if you look at that parable, immediately the devil comes and steals that word out of your heart where it was sown. How many has had a revelation and it was awesome? And next thing you know, you lose it. Anybody ever had that happen? Oh, man. We, we, touched, we touched on this a few times in the past, but you know, when you don't understand the word, a lot of people don't understand that the devil has snatched it away, but they, he doesn't take it out of your mind, and you can still have a, a knowledge of it, but lacking in the power of the heart is a producing center for the word of God. And we need to have that. So. So if you've got knowledge, but you're lacking the power, you know, just get that seed and sow it back in and ask the Holy Spirit to, to help you out. But uh, I'm telling you, when a person gets a revelation, please hear me. You guys are getting the revelation. You've got it. Of the kingdom of God. And and what's contained within a seed, the potential of that, of that life and spirit in that little seed in the word of God I'm telling you, when you know what that word can do, there's no power in hell, you know, or in the earth that can steal it from you. Aren't you glad for that? Yeah. When Even when things look totally the opposite, when you know that you have mustard seed faith and, and it's growing in you, you're not going to take your eyes off that word, you know. Yeah, all you need is a little more patience, you know. And, because you know that eventually it's going to take root, it's going to grow, and it's eventually going to, you know, be fulfilled, right? Praise the Lord. And so why is it that, that so many miss this revelation of the kingdom? A lot of reasons. I think it's just because the size of it is so small. You know, Jesus says it's the smallest of all the seeds. Isn't that what he said? But yet it's a real seed. And uh, when people see it, they don't believe in, the, in its ability to, 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 to grow and to rise and to empower them to, 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 to see whatever it is come into being. A lot of people have calls on their life, and it's just beyond. Anybody had a call on, of the Lord on your life is way beyond. And I'm telling you, you just got to... You got to get a hold of this this revelation that that's a seed in there. The Holy Spirit's sowing; He's going to water; He's going to bring you into the increase. He really is. And uh, I tell you, the devil he knows all about the power of the seed. 
That's why he's working so hard. Believe me, he's working harder than we may realize, even though we can't see him trying to steal the seed from us. He knows what God said over in Genesis chapter 3 concerning the seed of, of the woman, what it was going to do is going to crush the enemy, his head, right? Every one of you have the seed of the woman dwelling in you, right? Every one of you belong to Jesus, right? And so, man, I'm telling you, the Pharisees, let me just give you an example of the Pharisees. You know, Jesus, when he came, he came in a form that they weren't looking for, right? And, and look how he came. He came in such a humble form. I mean, he was born in a, in a manger by, by somebody. I mean, according to the Pharisees and their theology, they would have thought that God would have sent Jesus in another way. And he came in such a, a humble form, born in a manger. I mean, a lot of the people, I, I'm not, I don't know this for sure, but they probably thought he was illegitimate even because of, you know, and... I mean, they missed, they missed who he was. And the Pharisees uh, were, were caught up in, in seeing things from another point of view that when the Word of God actually was, was manifested, the kingdom was manifested right before their eyes in the flesh, you know, that the Word of God was active, alive in Jesus, setting people free, healing people, working miracles, all sorts of things. They still missed it. He was right before their eyes because he came in a, in a simple form, something they weren't looking for. Yeah. They, were, they, were, they were fellowshipping in another realm that they shouldn't have been fellowshipping. And, uh, and Jesus knew this. And he said, he said in Matthew 16, 6, he said, Take heed of, and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Take heed. Why? You know, what's he talking about? He meaning the doctrines of these men. And because why? What, what does scripture say a little leaven does? Does it still work that way in, in this generation? Yeah, yes. It leavens a whole lump, right? Yes. And it can cause you to become blind to the, to the simplicity of what God has given us. And he set it up. And uh, over in John chapter 10, verse 10, it says, and by our Lord says that the thief comes but for to steal, right? And so we're starting to get a picture of how he steals. But wait, we're going to go a little deeper here in a few minutes. And then he, try, he tries to kill and destroy us. And then we got to put, how many have, have, have been experiencing some of this? We probably all have, right? Yes. But praise the Lord Jesus has come that we might have life, right? Yes. This is a real deal. I'm telling you, and it comes in a, in a small little seed to start with. And, uh, and this is what the enemy's hard. This is kind of a spiritual warfare message in a way as well. He is hard at work stealing the word of God, sowing in your heart, trying to choke it out, you know, your very source of life. And he, and he knows that if he can steal that seed or choke it out of you, that he can cut you off. From your life source your only life source right and then they're going to have the power to come in and destroy and eventually kill you if you don't wake up in time is that the truth yes it really is i'm telling you that we really are at war and so let's look a little deeper at this how do they steal i've been i don't know why the lord takes me into things but how do they steal from us and i've discovered that it's primarily through relationship I'm telling you, even the ones you love the most, uh, uh, if you're not careful, and they know that if they can get you uh, to, to not live, you know, in this uh, life that Jesus came to bring you into, but if you could start relating to one another, we're building on a message from a few weeks ago uh, that you're not going to be able to see the light, you're not going to be able to enter into this life that Jesus has brought, you know, made available to us, and and it's the same old trick that the enemy has been, uh, that he started with Adam and Eve in the beginning, right? And so please hear this, the way I, the Lord is showing me that the way that he, uh, the enemy, the, the way the enemy makes us ignorant or blind, if you will, to the word 
is by educating the world. He educates you. Does that make sense? Takes you beyond the measures of what God has given you to live by and educates you. And this is what happened in the garden. In the beginning, you know, God gave very simple instructions and he gave man liberty to choose freely what tree he wanted to, to eat off of, except for one, which was the what? The tree of knowledge of good and evil. He said, don't eat of that one. And when you do, what's going to happen? You're going to die. And it's still the same today. It, it really is. And, and you see in Genesis 3 how the, the, the devil came in the form of a serpent which was more subtle, subtle than any other creature. And what did he do? He enticed Eve to look at that tree right. and that it, you know, it was pleasant to the eyes, okay? And to make one wise, you know, and like unto God's. And, and, and that's what he was uh, tempting her into and she partook of it. And what happened is she, she, she went above that measure of what God told her to do, and it cut her off from the life source, and uh, they died. They, they died spiritually right there. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. He educates, the devil educates you uh, so that you, you can't see the truth right before you. Oh. And how does he do it? To various means, relationships, and uh, we all know what that's all like, and you know, it says everybody has been impacted Right? Romans 3.23, all have sinned and have fallen short. But be prior to their fall, could you imagine the state of being those guys were walking in? They were more aware of the glory of the kingdom of, of God than anything else, weren't they? Yes. And, and how is it today? Which world are we more aware of? And God is trying to awaken me to say, you, you, you're still more aware of the of the external than you are of the of the kingdom, and he's trying to raise our awareness to this so that he can raise us in. But it comes through humility and, and being humble and staying within the measures that he gives us, and he brings increase. Amen. But the, the glory that fell, they fell from. I'm telling you, there's a glory that can come over you, and you know you're cloaked with the glory of God. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And when you when when you lose sight of that, it's you you lose, it's gone, right? You really know what that's like. And then you're naked. You know, you shouldn't go out of the house naked. You know, and, and so, man, man. So God is, uh, I believe, He's trying to 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 raise His body up into that realm of His glory, where we become so consumed by the kingdom where we we're more aware of the kingdom than we are of anything else and that's what he's trying to grow us into how many would like to to see more of that yeah, and we get caught up into that and and our brother through prayer this week and i can i talk about that just real quick can i have your permission yeah okay <laughs> just just for example he i heard the testimony can i share okay just a little bit he was getting prayer and, and something happened to him through prayer through the youth leaders here and you became completely unaware of this world isn't that right yes, is that what you said you didn't know you didn't know if you were in your body or not right and where were you he was in a garden with Jesus this week and, and he had a real he had an encounter with the Lord I'm telling you there's power in prayer and yes and so something is happening to this young man. And, and so what did he reveal to you in that? In that did he reveal some of your future? He was uh, talking about my calling. Your calling? Wow. Yeah. Wow. And then, like, like, I was in front of, like, thousands of people talking. Thousands of people wow. talking, yeah. So isn't that awesome? Praise yeah. the Lord. I mean, we all have a call. And, and he just uses everyday people just like you or me, you know. He just doesn't need to be a big preacher to, to be able to pray and bring people into uh, into the uh, the presence of the Lord, right? Yes. Hallelujah. So I'm excited about that. Hallelujah. So I believe the Lord is uh, is up to something. But uh, we got to be aware of the of the enemy and his and his tactics so that we can turn the tables around on 
on this guy, and they know that if they can get you to uh, leave your position, because God has re He has made it possible for you to be repositioned. You are a son and you are daughters of God, right? Yes. Praise the Lord. We can walk in the light as he is in the light, right? Yes. We can do all things through Christ. We, I'm telling you, he has really done something for us here. But if, if the devil can get you to leave that position of fellowship, our fellowship, it says in the scriptures, is supposed to be with the Father and the Son through the Spirit and, and uh, with one another. But if he can get you to leave that fellowship and lower yourself yeah. down to where you used to be prior to your conversion your conversion and start fellowshipping in that realm and if you if he can keep you there long enough he knows he can, can create a condition please hear me that's habit forming mm -hmm. habitual yeah. oh man how many know knows i mean that could go this this can include just the way you think how many have uh, got habits? Don't raise your hands. Uh, <laughs> maybe you're watching a TV program, you know, us every uh, every day, and, and God wants you to go do something. And how hard is it going to be for you? What's it going to take for you to to break through that habit and go do what God's called you to do? I'm not saying it's a sin to watch TV, but I'm just saying, I'm telling you. <clears throat> God, there is power in, 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 in creating habits. Yes. And, and he's trying to get you to live from your past and, and, and maybe look to the future if you want to and imagine things or look to the left or the right. But he, he wants to keep you, the devil wants to keep you out of the present, yeah. out of the presence of God. Yes. He's in the now, right? God is in the now. And he tries to get you in habits so you're always living you know, you're, you're not you're not seeking the kingdom. You're relying on your old thought patterns, and and right. I'm telling you, this can create. Yep. Oh, it can imprison you. Your worldly relationships. Right. If we if we relate on the wrong level, it can imprison you and keep you from the simplicity of the gospel that's right before you. It's so true. It is. This is the truth. Oh my gosh! If you don't believe me, just go talk to somebody who's worldly minded. And try to convert them. Go talk to somebody who believes in science. Like me, you couldn't have gotten me to listen to you for nothing. God had to do something extreme to get my attention. Um, and I thank God that he did. Because I would you know, I, I would just push people away. I wouldn't listen to their testimony. And there was no way. I had scientific evidence that what they're saying, you know, what they're saying is imaginary. is what I was thinking. It's... It doesn't even make sense. And it doesn't make sense to the world, but, but when you become born into it, it starts to make sense. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Even Christians or even religiously minded people, I'm telling you, there's other, other faiths that are religious, they have a form of godliness, but they're, they're not walking in the, in the born again reality. You try to convince them that that being born again, just for example, you take, take that one point, is not for today. And uh, even though the Bible says something totally different, you can't get them to believe it. Even though they have their Bible, they're reading it because they're believing something else above the word. Yep. Yep. Is that the truth? Yeah. I could give a lot of examples that people are blinded by... Uh, their own education, they've been too highly, they've exalted themselves above the knowledge of God in their thinking, and, it, and it, it keeps them from seeing the simplicity of what God has made available to everyone. Oh, man. So, yeah. What's worse than all this is, is we take through our relationships we, we, we are, if we're, if we're not careful, if we're relating to one another after the flesh, after how everybody else does, even as Christians, we can pass it on to our children. And we, and we do, we pass it on to the younger generation and they come up. And that's how, you know, things are passed on, right? And, and I'm telling you, it gets even worse than that because through your worldly relationships, if they're not rooted, if your relationship is not rooted in love, 
you know, the devil can come in and he can create something called strongholds in your life. That's right. He can wound you terribly through relationships. I'm telling you, the people that you love the most, they may not intentionally do it, but the devil gets involved because it's another spirit and they'll come in and they'll wound you terribly and, and try to, uh, to keep you from seeing and put you in a stronghold. Is this the truth? Has anybody yeah, been yeah, wounded? That's, that's it, bro. Oh man, and these are hard to break, but the truth will set you free. That's right. Yeah, that Jesus has come that we might be uh, living in Him with abundant life. And oh man, this is this just goes on and on. And we were talking just a few weeks ago about the power uh, of what this new life in Jesus has given us in Second Corinthians. Um, Paul told the Corinthians, you know that. Um, that about this power. When we're talking about relationship, I want to just kind of build on this a little bit. Is that all right if I build on it a little bit? You know, in our relationship, it says in 2 Corinthians 5.14 that the love of Christ constrains us. You know, anybody been constrained from saying what you really want to say in a relationship? Sometimes we slip and then it comes out and it hurts somebody, right? It can happen to the best of us, I'm telling you. And I, you know, I open my mouth sometimes without going to the Lord in prayer and getting that revelation of love. And what comes out can hurt people terribly. Thank God for mercy, right? Oh man! And it goes on to say in here, basically, you know, we need to become aware that Jesus, you know, if 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 He died for all, that all are dead. We we are dead, and we're not to live anymore from who we used to be because we are all new creatures. We've been made new creations in Him, right? We have this capacity now to live as a son, a daughter of God, relating, rightly relating to, to God by faith and to one another. And we're not even to know each other anymore after the flesh, it says in, in that scripture. So how many are still knowing each other, wow, after the flesh? And, and if you are, you know, just, just humble yourself and say, oh, and God, you know, thank God that you can get back in the light, right? And he knows he's trying to take us from where we used to be to where he, he, who we really are in him. And he will do it. But the part I really want to get to, and I think that if the, if the body of Christ would rise into what we're talking about, we would have one of the greatest evangelistic moves we'd ever seen if we could start relating to one another you know through our relationship with the father we would be able to i mean prior to uh jesus's resurrection and and, and the cross the new covenant you know there was a law he said the greatest commandment was to love but after he came what did he say i give you a new one right we can't do the new one without walking in the in the first one, right? right? But I tell you, you have the potential to relate to one another in this higher law of love. And he said that just as he was, I'm paraphrasing, as God was in Jesus drawing people unto himself, he's giving you that ministry. Mm -hmm. And how how is this ministry? How does it come into operation? Everybody has has family, right? Everybody has conversations throughout the day, right? Your conversation, how you relate to one another is a real ministry. I'm telling you, God can do powerful things just by how you talk to people. He can bring, oh man, and, and know that those gifts of the Spirit, you know, He might show you a word of knowledge in your conversation and say, I want you to tell them something. And you don't even have to tell them that it's from God. You could just say, what he shows you <laughs> in conversation, and it can bring a shift. That's the power of the seed. It can it can overcome something that they're dealing with. It can set them free. It can bring them peace. It can heal them. These gifts of spirit of the spirit are powerful. But how do they start? Simple little seeds, right? Yeah. Praise the Lord! I'm telling you, I'm in, I'm excited. So. So we don't want no strongholds anymore. We're going to break right. that guy. And the way to break it is just get out of those old relationships. You know, the way that I'm not saying don't relate to people, 
A lot of people can get off in the left field with this. God wants you to relate with people, right. but through his eyes and through right. his presence. And, and we can break these things. Jesus said he had come that we might have life, right? Yes. And have it abundantly. And uh, I know we're all interested in more of this. And he has very simply in the scripture provided a way to step into these truths. And how did he say it was in the scripture? He said, as a little child. He has made it so simple that we are to receive the kingdom as a little child. A little child can understand these things. They can look at a flower, pick it up, and see that, that God's in that flower. You know, he created that flower. It's growing, but uh, some of the most intelligent people in, in the world can't tell you what makes that flower grow. But a little child can see it, right? And so, oh man, God is... He is awesome. He has set it up so that his, you know, everything that he is can be seen through simplicity. He has set it up so that everything that we are to receive is only supposed, to, it can only come through his spirit. And everything springs through his spirit. He set it up so that no flesh could glory in his presence, right? He set it up that so that just the humble can see what we're talking about. You're not going to see what we're talking about until you get in the right place in your heart, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. And he, and he set it up to keep the darkness out. I'm telling you, you can keep the darkness out. How many would like to keep the darkness out? Amen. And if you, and I mean, he set it up that if you are bound by some darkness, that you can be set free. There's power in the name of Jesus. It's, it, and, and we just sow those little seeds. And, uh, and, and they, be, they can grow and become so powerful that they can set you free from anything. Hallelujah. So, praise the Lord. This is stirring anybody up a little bit. So, yeah, we give him all the glory because he just put this on my heart the other day and I just started writing it out. And I can't take any credit for these things. I have a, man, I put my foot in my mouth more than you know. Yeah. <laughs> At home, I really got to watch it, and because we can hurt each other, yeah, you know. Right. How many husbands in here could could have a better relationship with their wife if they would change the way they relate and talk to their wife, and vice versa, right? Yeah. And our children, you know, what would happen if we would speak to one another? We're supposed to love one another as Christ loved the church, right? And God has given us tremendous liberty. And we have liberty. We can hurt people if we want to, or we can bless them. What does it say in Galatians 5.13? You know, you know, where the Spirit of the Lord is, He's given us liberty in the Spirit, right? And uh, But we're not to take that liberty and use it for the desires of the flesh. But we're supposed to serve one another in love, right? But you can do it if you want to, but it's going to come back at you too. And worse, you know, multiplication. Talk about multiplication in reverse there, huh? Right. <laughs> you know, <like> that. Yeah. <laughs> and, you and, you know, so very simply, there's tremendous power to simplicity that if we would just simply live within those measures that God has given us, you know, as a little child, we can see these things. If you come down to the place where he called you to live from, you can see what we're talking about. And uh, he has set it up where you can um, you can overcome these tremendous desires of the flesh. How many know how powerful the flesh can get? It can get tremendously powerful, and and uh, but but it's not more powerful than the Word of God. And our fellowship is no longer to be with darkness, with 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 the world, but with you know with each other in love through, through God, right? Praise and there's power there. There's tremendous power. So, hallelujah. So I don't know how much more I should go here, but man, Jesus. Well, let me just start winding down here. I'm going to go over to uh, Romans chapter 12 and just I just want to just talk about this measure a little bit. And it's very clear here. He told the the apostle Paul. He knew what we're talking about. He told the Romans that, that the way to, to step into this realm where you could see 
the kingdom, where you could prove the kingdom. In the verse two verses, you had to humble yourself. You had to become a living sacrifice. Aren't you glad that you get to be a living sacrifice, though? Yes. Yeah. And then, and then, and then, if you if you get into that place and you and you're no longer conformed to the world, but renewed by the spirit of God's kingdom coming to you through that measure He gives you, you could prove the word of God. You can see your destiny fulfilled in spite of whatever the world is saying you can't do. Just like Wilma, our sister came in and, and she she entered into ministry, full-time ministry, not that they weren't ministers before, but they went and they said, well, you guys are too old to go. And that's what they, that's what she was told. That, and they didn't have the financial backing to go, but God said to go. And they believed God over everything else that was even, you know, the testimonies of brothers and sisters and what had God done. Look what he did through their lives. It's a tremendous example there of what we're talking about. They just believe with simplicity. Praise the Lord. And so it says in verse 3, Romans 12, 3, Paul said through the grace given unto him that, uh, and I like how he talks, he only spoke according to the grace that was given to him. That every man that is among you is not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. And there it is right there. You know, but to think soberly according to the measure as God has dealt to every one of you and me, the measure of faith. So we have a measure of faith. And he has it for you every day, 24-7, there is a measure of faith for you to go. But if you look beyond that measure and you look to the distance of your call, you're going to be stifled. I was jogging last week. Anybody remember my testimony? And then God took me jogging, and it was beyond what I thought I could do in the natural. And every time I looked beyond the steps, he told me to keep my eyes just focused on the steps right before me. When I was looking at the steps right before me, I was in the state of mind, well, I can do this. I can hit that step. And I hit that. I could pick another few steps. And I could. I was always in that can-do state of mind. But when I looked beyond... Uh, the measure that the steps right before me, I became suddenly, you know, overwhelmed with inability because I was looking beyond. And uh, this is what happens so many times in people's lives. You know, they're, they're willing to be thankful for what God's done in the past and to look forward to the future, but but they don't have the power to, to walk it out because they're, they're missing what's right before them they're not looking right before them. We've got to look at the measures right before them. And basically, everything we do in life, our giftings, our calls, is just with simplicity. That's what it says. Hallelujah. So I hope that's blessing somebody here today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I probably should, should just close right there. I'm going to close with a a scripture Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty five 25 concerning uh, uh, what we're talking about today he said I thank thee O Father Lord of heaven and earth because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent and has revealed them unto the babes and um, so that's good news for all of us and so how do you have mustard seed faith just know that you have that measure, and, and, and if he gives you a vision of something, you know, something, maybe you're to be a missionary, and it's going to take a lot of resources, you just believe him for his word, and know that he comes, and he shows you your, your destiny, but then he comes back to your present, and he gives you these little steps. If you just follow those steps with simplicity, you're going to be empowered, and along the way, he's going to show you every step. Just like it was with Noah. He told Noah, who was Noah? He was a very simple man, right? He said, a flood is going to come, Noah. It was so simple, people didn't believe him that because it's never rained before, right? He said, I want you to build a big ark. Did he know how to build the ark? No. God gave him the, the instructions, right? He'll give you the instructions. And all we got to do is enter in. And if you look through history, 
he, the salvation of the Lord has always been through very simplistic um, means, you know. We could go on and on with this, but uh, everybody gets the point. And so I'm going to close with that, and we want to open this up to the ministry of the Spirit. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here, that the kingdom is at hand, and we just humble ourselves before you. We reverence you. We thank you for revealing those measures you want us to walk in and hear and, and to receive. And I pray that uh, you would just touch everybody in this place and bless them in the name of Jesus. And we pray for the, the, the tithes and any offerings. And we thank you for those. And I pray that you would multiply that back and, and bless everybody here in the name of Jesus. We give you the glory and the praise. Amen. 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 So I hope that stirs somebody today. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord.